Hallelujah. Welcoming everyone to our Saturday night evening service to Rahab Church in Jesus name. We believe that Lord has a plan for your life and his plan yet changed that he planned before the world began the Bible says that God who cannot lie promised eternal life before the world began he promises eternal hope to everyone who comes to him you are whatever your wherever you live what circumstances you go through doesn't matter to God all it matters is you have been created in his likeness and image he has been waiting for you to come to him he has already made the move by sending his one and only son and we are heralds standing with God's word to share the good news there is a lot of news out there and majority of those news is bad news there is only one news that's a good news because this news not remain for a moment or a season all the news of this world is time bound and circumstantial but this news is eternal you become into a relationship that no one can take from you he already planned it and he already performed it through the sacrificial work on the cross you might be living in a place of brokenness you might be trying to hide yourself from reality of life you don't have to God knows everything that you go through. He knows the things that you have done to cover up the void in your life. But you don't have to do that anymore. You just can simply come to him. He will fill that void and that vacuum that has come for you have taken up to things that would try to comfort you. As much as his love is abounding, there is a judgment that awaits godless people. You can reject this offer, but the end of this rejection is painful. It says in the book of Romans, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of man who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest. seen being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse God has made this beautiful earth for man to the Bible says in Psalms 19 1 the heavens declare the glory of God and the earth his handiwork when you look at this beautiful earth and everything around you, it, it is a reminder that God created this earth. I see some beautiful buildings and structures all around me. And if I ask one of you a question, who made it? For sure you have answers. You would say that engineering design, an engineer, an architect, there were masons involved plumbers there were technicians of all kinds there were business people who invested their money into it so there were people behind these beautiful structures if so for the world that we have created and live in how much more it is true that this 
had a creator. So the Bible says that God is against mankind because they have denied this truth. People believe that, you know, this is like some kind of evolution. It's like, you know, the world existed for time immemorial and there was some <coughs> kind of a big bang. And as as this came into being and so came humans. My question to all these skeptics in this evening is, if you believe in science, Every scientific reaction or any scientific procedure should have a similar outcome. If that is the case, then you tell me through evolution can a similar outcome can come in this world. I believe that those who propound or propo are the proponents of this theory, they, they, it doesn't hold tight because they are rambling for words with no evidences. Man is inexcusable and undeniable truth. Maybe for nine months in the womb and that baby is born, it's not the theory of evolution it is as the wind blows so is how the womb, the womb of the, the one that is with child and so are the ways of God which means God is the creator God is the one who created us and he is the one who causes life and life comes from him the Bible says he made man in his life and in his image. Everyone who is under my face, everyone who traveling in car and, and at the store, or everyone who is here, here right now, you have been created in God's image. You have been created in God's likeness. But this image and this likeness had been distorted because of sin. You know, you would ask, sin, sin, the mark. This a simple definition. Let me go a little deeper. Sin is violating God's very commandment. Sin is disobeying God. Sin is doing what is you, what does not please God. Sin is denying and hating God and walking in our own will. At this time, people have suppressed the truth. There is truth, but they suppress. It's like, you know, you have something in your hand, you hide it, suppress it. So have people done it. And though they deny it, yet the truth stands before them. Can you control this weather? Can you control the movement of these crowds? Can you stop the rain from coming down on this earth? Can you stop the fire from happening? These are evidences so real before mankind that there is a real God and He lives forevermore. And this is for everyone to know. So God says that His wrath is against everyone who suffers this truth because they can know this truth because it is manifest through the invisible things from the creation of the world are clearly seen and understood by the things that are made even the eternal power and Godhead because that when they know God they glorified him not as God neither were thankful but became vain in their imaginations. You know, God has given every man imagination. But they have corrupted their imagination and destroyed their imagination because of sin. And because of that, they have turned.
turned into things that they are not supposed to do. The Bible says their foolish heart was burned. Man says there is no God. It's like a fool has said there is no God in his heart. And they have changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. They have changed the image of God from the true and living God who gives life to things that are made, things that don't have life and they Put their trust in things that are not real. So God pronounces judgment on everyone who has embraced the lie and embraced and suppressed the truth. So what? Wherefore God also gave them to uncleanness through their lust of their own heart, their own body selves. In the process, people indulged in sinful things. The Bible says, who changed the truth of God into lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forevermore. Amen. And like this cause, God gave them up unto their wild affections for even their women did things that changed the natural use into that which is against the so this problem exists from the time men fell in sin and people began to indulge in sinful things. Women with women and it says likewise also men leaving their natural use of women burned in their lust one toward another men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. God is going to punish everyone who dishonors the way in which God has created them. And when they say things that they are not, God is going to judge them. When they change the truth, when they believe in things that is not right, when they make wrong right, God is going to judge them. It is time to repent because there is a burning fury and a hell that awaits everyone who dishonors God. That will be a reality that will come upon everyone that is born of woman in this planet. Be assured that if you don't place your trust in Jesus, you are headed towards an eternal hell and a lake of fire where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. Therefore, Christ offers everyone this opportunity to come and live. Give your life to Christ. Now is the time to you don't have it. In your hands now and today is the day of salvation being filled with unrighteousness fornication wickedness covetousness maliciousness full of envy murder debate deceit malignity whisperers backbiters haters of God despiteful proud boasters inventors of evil things disobedient to parents without understanding covenant breakers without natural affection implacable unmerciful who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death not only to do the same but have pleasure in them that do them Paul lists down a list of sins that people are committing. The Bible says there's a way that seems right unto man, but the end thereof is death. But there is a narrow way that leads unto righteousness. This evening, I would like to finally close with this. He loved you so much. He cares for you so much that he died for you. You might have heard it all through your life and still sounding that you, yet you have not committed your life 
it's time that you make that decision. You have filled many things to fill your brokenness and vacuum and it's not going to help you because those are temporal things and you shall not be able to quench the inmost need of your heart through that. You know, though God is, is wrath is against all that God says, before I release my wrath, I shall mercy. God's mercy is still here down on this planet. This earth will be rolled up like a cottage. This earth will be burnt in fire one day while yet God has not raised the gap down. You can be assured still there is mercy. This moment is filled with mercy. Why don't you come to him? to hide the way you live and be honest to God and tell the Lord I am a sinner. We all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. You know we don't have to be righteous and tell we are this and we are that. Then we are not anything but we were sinners saved by the grace of God. Everyone has a story. I also have a story. You know, growing up as a teenager, I also desired to live in the things of the world. But thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Calvary. Thank God for blood. Thank God for those godly parents and godly men and women who spoke the message of salvation into my life. You know, one thing, my life is not better any one of you but because of Jesus but while we were sinners Christ died for us it happened many years back I happened to do a ministry in the prison it was down in Texas I went with a bunch of brothers in the world I went in for this ministry and while I was standing in the queue to enter into the Jesus I saw a young girl, maybe three or four years old little girl. The moment I had the child, my heart was filled with tears. And I began to say to the Lord, Oh God, why did this little child come in this place? She is not supposed to be in this place. It is not the place that she should be. Her innocence is being stolen. Her life is being stolen. And God, I began to say a bunch of things to the Lord. Oh God, what is this? Why this is going on? This is so painful. I cannot take it. Oh, by that time, I had a little girl. I was thinking, if that little girl was my daughter standing there, and the Lord said, Oh, you could also have been their son. You were not better than them. But it was because of the cross. It was because of the love of Jesus. You know what? If you ask something at this time, that what, why you, what, what makes you so happy or why you are so joyful? Do you think that you have everything in life? I would say yes. Because I have Jesus, I have everything in life. You know, money cannot satisfy me. Having a good care car cannot satisfy me. Oh, having a lot of money in the bank cannot satisfy me. Oh, having a nice home cannot satisfy me. I mean, they can satisfy you momentarily, but they don't have eternal values. Because there, you know, there will be a time when you will get worn out of those things. Then what you will do? Oh, hallelujah. Oh, there is only joy in his presence. I began to walk into that prison and began to minister to this plea people. And I used to see them behind the bars and began to look at them. And I used to thank them. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. You, know, you give me the wealth of the world and tell me, oh, would you deny Jesus? I would say, keep your wealth for you. I love Jesus. If you love Jesus, you have everything. There was a Holocaust survivor. Her name was Corrie Ten Boom. She said like this, if Jesus is all you have, Jesus is all you need. Oh, hallelujah. 
as Christ, he has everything. The Bible says, I can do all things through Christ. Strengthens me. Oh, praise God for Jesus. Praise God for the Calvary. Oh, he did not have to die for me. But he loved me enough. He loved me so much. The Bible says, his love is beyond all imaginations. Love is so high, I cannot get it. His love is so deep, I cannot get under it. His love is so wide, I cannot get around it. That love is shared in my heart. That of the living God, praise God for Jesus. If you don't have Jesus, you are missing the most valuable person for all. And you need to know him. If not, life is most miserable. The Bible says about Jesus, he's the brightness of his glory, the exact representation of God, who, who opposes everything by the word of his power, and who is seated at the right hand of God and has principalities and powers, dominions, everything under him, all the in this earth, in the world to come is under Jesus. He's the King of Kings. The book of Psalms says, Lift up ye gates, all the everlasting doors. Lift up your heads. Let the King of Glory come in. Who is this King of Glory? The Lord is strong and mighty in battle. Hallelujah. Oh, my Lord, oh, came like a suffering servant, oh, in the, in, in, in incarnation, by coming as the lion of the tribe of Judah, or oh, to subdue all wicked, in, the, in, in incarnation, he came as a lamb, oh, now he comes as a royal king, oh, riding on the horse, and with the sword of God. Or oh, down his, oh yes, his, oh, from his mouth will spew out and destroy the enemy. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, he heals the brokenhearted. He sets the captives free. He causes the lame to walk again. I know my Lord is able. Oh, he walked on this earth for 33 and a half years. And he, he comforted the people. He fed the 5,000. He fed the 3,000. Oh, he raised the dead people. Oh, he forgave sinners. He opened blind eyes. He caused the leper. He caused the lame to walk. And finally, he gave his life so that you and I can live. The Bible says, because Jesus lives, we also shall live. I mean, oh, we will live forever. The love of Jesus is so precious. The Bible says, behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us. Beloved, we do not know what we shall be. And he shall come, we shall. Him, for we shall see him and we shall be as he is. Can anything get better than this? I mean, you shall become like as he is. That's the greatest privilege. I mean, like the almighty God, you will have the same appearance. You shall be with him forever. Can anything get better than this? I mean, you are chasing for things of this life. Not bad. We all need that. But can this get this much better that you shall be with the living God who dwells in light where no man can approach. You shall be with him in glory. You will embrace that glory and that glory he offers. Hallelujah. Beloved, we are not standing here with any other message. I mean, we also have so many busy things to do in life. But why we are taking this time to share this message is because we know the value of this prize. We know that if you die today, you will end in hell if your life is not in Christ. I mean, some went to hell and they saw this vision. I mean, it's horrendous. Oh, the flame is burning. Oh, the flesh is burning. And it is burning. 
all the time and they, it's burning for eternity and people are crying but no one can get them out they denied Christ you know when I think about all these things all I see is Lord all I desire is you Lord Lord this life this breath till the last for Jesus oh all our labors will one day be over you are laboring for all these things great but labor for Jesus your labor shall be not in vain oh Paul says therefore my beloved be strong and immortal in the Lord for your labor in the Lord is not in vain for the one who has promised shall keep faithful is the one who has promised The Lord loves you. There have been many broken stories of people who turned their life to the Lord. Oh, they lived in misery. They lived in hopelessness. You don't have to be like that. Oh, yes. When they turned their life to Christ, their life changed for good. Your life will also change for good. Oh, he will turn you around. Give your life to Jesus. Can it get better than this? You shall have him forever. You shall be with him forever. You shall be like him. Can this get better than this? What you are chasing for? Can you change the direction of your chase? Start chasing Jesus. Start going after Jesus. Your life will never ever be the same. Hallelujah. I would like to give you a time to time of invitation. Wherever you are, you can commit your life to Jesus. You can say, Jesus, come into my heart. I'm repenting of all my sins. I'm turning from the way I lived my life. I'm committing my life to you, Jesus. Forgive my sins, Lord. Oh, wash me and cleanse me. I know you died on the cross. You shed the last drop of blood. And through the shedding of your blood, there is forgiveness of sin <coughs> sins. <coughs> and as you commit your life to Christ, your life will never, ever be the same. You don't have to. You don't have to do things that will destroy your life. Don't put things that will destroy your body. You don't have to be in things that are destructive. Jesus will make your life blessed and constructive and a blessing for many. If you have prayed that prayer, Something has begun in you. A change has started for good. You can come down and we will pray for you. Oh, he is a Jesus who changes our story. Oh, hallelujah. There is a song. It says like this. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful day. Day I will never forget. After I wandered in darkness, Jesus, my Savior, I met. Shadows dispelling, with joy I am telling, He changed my life forever. Oh, what a change. Jesus comes in your life. Hallelujah. Gracious, loving Father, I pray people heard your word that was spoken Lord Lord you will honor your word and this word will be a witness on that day when we will all stand before the judgment seat of Jesus Lord and Lord we have done our part now Holy Spirit do your part convict men and women boys and girls to the saving truth of Jesus Christ and 
O Lord. Draw them out of darkness into your marvelous light, we pray God. Set them free from every bondage that has bound them for life together, O God. Hallelujah.